Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content on a good night. Listener discretion is advised. What did that guy say? I don't know. That music was ripping, though. The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. That's 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. And now, here's Loveline with your host, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes, indeed, indeed. Well, let me get the phone number out, and then we'll get into the corrections. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. Dr. Drew is out on his anniversary, I believe. I think he has a good 10 years under his belt. He and his lovely bride are uh, out celebrating somewhere. They'll be back, let's see, they'll be gone tonight and tomorrow night, and then uh, back for the rest of the fabulous week here on Loveline tomorrow night. Candlebox will be in here, and uh, tonight and tomorrow night, filling in for Dr. Drew, as he uh, always does, is Dr. Bruce. Oh, uh, that, that's here. your cue to <laughs> lean in, into the mic and say something. Oh, it's going to be a long night. Yeah. Bruce, you all right? I'm fine. All right, why don't you give your credentials uh, once again so that people calling know who you are? I'm board-certified physician, and I practice addiction, adolescent, and emergency medicine. All right. So the difference between your your career and Drew's career is you're still in. Uh, are you? You're still in the emergency room, right? Uh, I'm. I'm still there and will permanently be there. Hopefully, it's it's become somewhat of a specialty in medicine. But don't most doctors do a tour in the um, in the emergency room and then try to get out? Uh, up and well, actually, up until about 25, 30 years ago, physicians rotated through the emergency department, OBGYNs and internists, everybody took their turn, and there were enough people dying from that process that they uh, decided that certain people needed to specialize in emergency medicine. So oh, really? Right. So because it's a residency, it's, you take a training program. and Right. Because it's uh, you got to yell clear, <laughs> and uh, then you got to pull your mask off and yell, damn it, there's nothing I could do. And there's things that you have to rehearse in front of the mirror, right? I'm an expert at removing things from orifices. You know, yes. Like all, all the things that you know about emergency medicine, Adam. Well, um, you uh, nails from uh, the heads of uh, carpenters and um, bowling pins from the asses of uh, the guys whose houses they're working on. <laughs> all right. So uh, you, you, you more than meet the criteria here on Loveline, don't oh, you? I'm, I'm sure for Loveline I do. Okay. So here we go. Claire. Um, hi. Hi, you're 16. Yeah. Um, I've been anorexic and bulimic since fifth grade, and my friends keep telling me I'm going to kill myself like this, and I know I probably will, but I'm a little scared. I can't make myself stop, but I've gone to hospitals and stuff, and I just can't do it. The fifth grade? Yeah. Um, how much do you weigh now? Uh, 106. How tall are you? Uh, five, six. So that's pretty thin. Um, no. Oh, you'd like to be thinner? Yeah. Um, that's pretty thin, though. I, I got to tell you, through the eyes of uh, most sane folks, that is thin. Is it not? That's thin. Claire, are you still going to, are you still going to your counselor or your psychologist? or? Yeah. And you don't feel like things are working out that well? Well, I've been seeing her for three or four years, and I haven't exactly gotten any better. Okay, and, you know, with something like anorexia nervosa, the the progression of the disease, you know, it is a disease, and it's something that you have to stick with, stick with the same counselor, and it takes sometimes oh, yeah. years. Yeah, this one's golden, this one. This is your lucky counselor. Three years, no help? Well, not no help, but... Well, I don't know. She hasn't curtailed her, her habits at all. Have yeah. you, Claire? Um, I'm not as as bulimic anymore, I'm more uh, anorexic than I was before. So you're, you're not throwing up as much, but you're not eating as much to throw up. Yeah, but sometimes I still throw up. Right, but it's, you know, you're going through a lot of changes. Just being 16 years old and being a teenager, your body's going through a lot of changes, your brain's still developing, and it's a tr you know, it's sort of a tumultuous time anyway. Hey, Claire. What, what's going on at home? Anything, you know, usually there's something in the background of this. Did you have some family problems way back when or um my dad used to be an alcoholic and he is a gambler and my parents used to like when i'd get in trouble they drag me up the stairs by my ears did your mom take you to ballet classes when you were little um yeah i was in dance until eighth grade i'll never let my child get involved with dance 
So you, there were some abuse issues, and your parents were a little bit overbearing in some areas. Yeah, my dad is like 65 now. Oh boy. Okay. How old's your mom? Um, 40. Great. All right, so Claire, but you understand what's going on, right? Um. Yeah, but I can't stop. And like, can you be honest with your counselor and tell her or he that you can't stop? Yeah, I do, but I don't know. She doesn't really do anything. She doesn't really tell me anything to help me. We just kind of talk about, like, what I'm telling you guys. All right, but she's completely aware that you're continuing doing what you're doing. Yeah. And well, when was your last hospitalization? Um, uh, two years ago. All right, well, Claire, as you know, I'm a genius, right? Uh, yeah. As I've uh, described myself that way, at least on the air, almost on a nightly basis. So, Claire, I'm commanding that you stop. Well, the other thing is that I do self-mutilation. Right. And people, like, my boyfriend dumped me because of it. All right, well, Claire. Uh -huh. Listen, I know you're in a lot of pain, and I know you need uh, an outlet for this pain, but your arm and your esophagus is, is not not the canvas for you. You know what I mean? You need to start doing something. Get into kickboxing or something like that. Right. I, mean, I, I don't know what to say. She knows what's going on. She knows it's not right. Right. A lot of stuff going on. Cutting on oneself, a sign obviously of depression and other major problems. So the important thing I think for kids and adults to realize is that a lot of issues like this take a long time to unfold. And the therapy, it you know, years sounds like a long time, but uh, she's probably, uh, she, you know, She's probably wow. in need of continuing to see the therapist. And yeah, I'd say on. maybe she should even double up <laughs> to therapists. I, I don't know what to say. She's going to a therapist. Should she switch the therapist? Should she find a new therapist? This one doesn't seem to be serving her real well. Uh, probably, th probably not. There are probably some other confounding issues about her perception of the therapist. Right. I, Although I, you can't. I don't want to sound naive, but just how about just knocking it off? You know what I mean? You can only get so much therapy. You can only read so many books. You can only listen to so many cassettes or uh, listen to uh, so many episodes of Love Line. It eventually just comes back to you. Are you going to stop or aren't you? Right. Well, that's in some behavioral cases, that's true. But with something like All right, but anorexia she, nervosa. She's not hooked on heroin. Right. But anorexia nervosa, the electrolyte, you know, your sodium, potassium balance, things like that can kill you. Uh, and it's uh, sort of the type thing that it's got a medical connection that's very serious. Uh, so, so what? Shouldn't you just stop, though? She should. Uh, she should stop her behavior. But it's not as simple as that. And with you know, you, right. if you you go back as you frequently discuss right. in the show, Listen, you go back to this. Bruce, I got to tell you, history. we can't help everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I know you want to do one call the first hour and then the second call the second hour and go home. Take You're fat. Uh, take four calls in the two days you're here. It's right. not going to work that way. I, I understand. It's okay. very sad, but... T I, it is, but what can you do? Thomas. Yeah. You're 16. Hi, guys. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. And, um... All right. <laughs> I and hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hey, Bruce, uh -huh. you don't have to write down the number of the call after I punch it in. <laughs> <laughs> Your job is to pick the calls in advance, and then I look at the number that you write down. Don't write it in after I've already punched it up. Yeah, I bet you look forward to me filling in for Drew. So yes. Abuse that. Oh, no. I abused Drew equally. All right, Thomas. Sorry. I punched uh, you in because I saw the words bloody and stool, and they were right <laughs> next to each other. Uh, okay. Well, I sort of have two questions for you guys. Like, about a month ago, when I started taking a crap, I would have bloody stools. It, it happened, like, one day, and it would stop, and, like, three days later, it would be back again. And I would like to know what's causing this. It would, like continue for like a day or two and that would stop for like about from up to three days to a week mm -hmm. if i could put my sigmoidoscope through the long phone line of <laughs> it's you, and you're lucky you can't thomas yes yeah. you know where to be heading okay generally at your age the cause of bloody stools are hemorrhoids or a fissure something rather minor but you cannot rule out that it's something more serious i've seen individuals get cancer in their teens it's very unusual but you really have to go to the doctor, get the rectal exam, and then he's probably going to want to... Hey, Drew. I mean, uh, hey, Bruce. Uh -huh. Is the bloody stool because of a fissure? And I'm not calling it a fissure. It's a fissure, isn't it? It may be. Yeah, and it's uh, angina. It's not angina. Uh, but anyway, and it's the uh, 
it's the it's the Cannes Film Festival, not the Cannes Film Festival. But is it is it because the uh, poo uh, scrapes uh, past uh, where the uh, blood is emanating from? It's not in the stool. It's like on the stool, right? Right. right. And that you know, there's much less likelihood of it being a real serious problem when you have bright red blood versus the microscopic blood that you check with the hemocult test. So, at at age 16, bloody stools you can have. You might not know that you have hemorrhoids because some are internal, but the problem is whenever you have, whether it's bright red or uh, the microscopic type blood in your stool, you have to be seen by the physician. He's going to do the rectal exam. Oh. And <laughs> I went into Drew with this about two years ago into his office, and he threw me out. <laughs> A wise move on Drew's part. Hey, hey, don't you think that's some sort of um, obstruction of his uh, Hippocratic Oath or something? Couldn't he be drummed out of the profession for refusing to see a patient? It's called good, healthy boundaries. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I wanted him to prove his love by uh, checking out a stool sample or more or ah. going in after one. But he tossed me out of his office immediately, and I've never seen him so serious. <laughs> Frightening. Donna. All right, so, so Thomas has to go in and see somebody you gotta, who's got blood yeah, in his stool. Right. you got to go to the doctor. Donna? Yeah, this is Donna. What's going on? Um... I have fallen in love with this guy who's a lot younger than me, and I was dating another one, another guy that was my age, and he's like, he's a DJ. He doesn't have a lot of time for me. He kind of knows the lifestyle. And this More guy, lifestyle. I work uh, 10 hours a week. Well... I got nothing but time. A, I sat on my sofa the entire day today, and I didn't even know it was Sunday. Okay, and, and it seems like he doesn't have enough time, but the problem is, is I was helping out this person, and he's only 21, and we both kind of, and I can't trust my problem with, because I don't, you know, at night I'm a different person from in the day, because I have this multi-personality disorder. I can't tell sometimes one thing from another. Right, but is that happen during the night and day? No, at night. I'm a different person, but I'm starting to get where I can realize when I am a different person, and the other ones, this this one at night is like a teenager. Hold on one second. Let me talk to my uh, compadre, Bruce, here. Hey, hmm. as far as this multi-personality disorder, can you time it? Doesn't it just sneak up on you and happen when, um, I don't know, like, you know, when Bill Bixby and the Incredible Hulk, mm. when he get really pissed off, all of a sudden the Hulk would come out or he'd be under a lot of stress or trauma. What brings out the other personality? And does it work where, like, hey, at night you're this way and by day you're that way? No, it's, it's thought to be a, a product of some, some overwhelmingly stressful Right. Something Somebody happened. ritualistically yep. abused you when you were a kid, and you had to get a new personality in order to sort of forget about that. Right, and the switches occur under stress or... Like Bill Bixby. Yeah, like Bill Bixby. That's, that's great. And so, and in, in a situation, this sounds a little bit unusual. You know, the question I'd have is, she's, you know, once again, are we in therapy? Are we seeing somebody? Or maybe you're just drinking at night. Donna? At, oh. at night, I have this feeling like... I want to go out. I want to, and that's what changes it. Or a male person that comes and harasses me will bring it out. Um, hey, the, Don other, Donna? the other one's the baby that has everything locked in her, and that's what we've been working on with me and the therapist have been working on the baby trying to get it out because a year ago she tried to kill me. The baby did? Yeah. What does your therapist think about you getting in a relationship at all at this point? I've... I didn't even remember the guys I was with before I started therapy. So I mean, I think I must have dated Donna at some point. <laughs> Donna, how old's the baby? Oh, probably about six, because that's when she was in the closet. That's all I remember, and I, I pass out when oh boy. it happened. So what happened to the baby when um, the baby was six? Um, she was molested and abused and right. sexually and I was left to raise my brothers and sisters. So who, who did this to um, to you or the baby? My father. Uh-huh. But I, I dealed with that. How did the baby fine. try to kill you? Um, couldn't. My sister threatened to kill me, and I couldn't put um, my sister in there. Right. I was for men. Oh, Donna. Abuse, for sexual abuse, and that's what he's right. talking it. about. But that's Okay, listen, listen. 
With a problem like this, I think getting better involves integration of the personalities back so that Donna is in control and they disappear and, and get reintegrated. So it's not sounding like you're at that point. And to get involved in a relationship at this point is not a good idea. Uh, hey, so, hey, Donna. What? You know, yeah, I'm sure your therapist must have told you this. Unless you got no, the same therapist our last caller had with the yeah, eating problem. We're dealing with the, um, I don't even remember the guys I was with. They had next I understand. Day, and I now can uh, kind of understand when she's coming on. Hey, Donna? Yeah? Do you have any kids? Yeah. Oh, how many? I got two boys. They're 17. And now, is that, is, it, is that one boy or is that really two, two, two boys? boys. Two boys. I have two boys. Oh boy! And I raised all my brothers too. Oh baby, how are those two boys, those two sons of yours doing? Um, the number one son, the seventeen-year-old, is going to be a senior, and he's going to college. Really? All right. And, what and a... number two is ADHD, but we're really working on it. Good. All right. So I don't give up on my kids. That's good. The one I That's am, right. I I got practice raising my brothers. Right. All right, Donna. Here's our advice. Um. Whatever guy you're attracted to at this point in your life is probably not going to be Mr. Right. You focus on uh, raising those two beautiful sons of yours. You, you focus on your therapy. And then you wait back, let things come into focus. And then you find the right guy. Wouldn't you say? Actually, good advice. Really? Thinking about uh, retraction uh, tomorrow night. I'll probably have my lawyers prepare something. Sean. Yeah. You're 18. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. What's going on there, bro? What's up? Yeah, what's happening with you? I'm kind of going through uh, an identity crisis, I guess you could say. Uh-huh. Um, I, about a month ago, I used to be the way I was for most of my life. I listened to my music, man, you know, my metal. I dressed in, you know, leather, and I had combat boots, and, you know, a whole nine yards. All right. I was comfortable with, with who I was. And then all of a sudden I started listening to different music and dressing differently, and now i am lost all my friends and none of them want to talk to me. What are you listening to now? Alternative music. Uh, the stuff that I swore I'd never listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Satan's going to want, <laughs> want his guitar back. It, what, uh, what, do you listen, what did you listen to then? When I did listen to metal? Yeah. Uh, typo. Uh huh. Um, Cannibal Corpse. Sure. Six Feet Under. Right. Pantera. Hey, ever listen to any Megadeth? Yeah, Megadeth. Old Megadeth before Cryptic Writings. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, pre Cryptic, they were pretty hot, but they sold out after Cryptic. But, you know, Nick Menza, the drummer for uh, Megadeth? Yeah. My good buddy from, uh, from grade school. Is All that right. right? Fifth, sixth grade. Used to go hang out with him. You know, it's funny. These guys, uh, Nick, Nick, regular guy. I wore glasses, had a short haircut, you know. So, Sean, how many hours a day were you listening to the metal? Like every hour. Walkman was always on. Okay. Are you done with high school now? or? I No, I dropped out. Now I'm going back. Okay. Any drugs? Um, long time ago, yeah. All right, so now what are you listening to? Oh, God. Um, Smash Mouth. Um, All right. Xbox 20. Yeah. Stuff that, you know, I shouldn't listen to. Uh oh, what are you on the back of a motorcycle? No, I'm outside. I'm smoking a cigarette. Oh, okay. All right. So now, why the switch? Why the transition? I I don't know. That's <laughs> hoping you guys could help me with that. <laughs> well, let me tell you. I I got to be honest with you. It's a good transition for you, and here's why, Sean. I was at a uh, concert last night. Nobody had ever heard of. I assure you. Yeah. Where are you calling from? Chicago. Okay, never heard of this band. I never, I didn't even know the band. But the point is, is a uh, lot of, lot of heavy metal guys, and a lot of them uh, getting into their later thirties and early forties. It's not pretty at that age. Yeah. The leopard skin pants, the, uh, the muscle shirts, the hair out to here. It, it doesn't. It, it looks good on a guy who's felt, you know, twenty two, twenty three. But it doesn't work so well when the guy's getting into his early forty. So this is a good transition for you, Sean. But, um, I mean, I, I lost all my friends. That's all right. That's okay. They're just the guys who uh, bang their head. I know these guys. They're, uh, they got themselves a uh, Chevy small block on a cherry picker out in the garage. 
They keep talking about dropping it into some car it doesn't belong in, but they never get around to doing it. Their parents are on their back. They hate their boss. All they want to do is uh, pray to Ozzy and bang their head and uh, smoke pot, and, uh, and their hair's a mess. This is a better path for you, Sean. Uh, am you, I right? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not I sure we I really am. satisfied his need there for I was uh, Look, it's a transition. And if your friends uh, judge you by the music you listen to, then uh, F them. Right. Well, I was wondering how much alternative he's listening to a day. If he's every minute of the day, or maybe he just has more time in his hands. It doesn't sound like he had much time for anything else before. No. All right. This is fine. Okay. This is not a big problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, Heather's 14, afraid to leave the house unless she's with a parent. Fear of rape. Well, she's never been raped. Hmm. Maybe she um, she must uh, watch a lot of uh, the USA Channel. Could be it. Hmm. Heather. Yeah. You're scared of being raped, but you've never been raped. No. Okay. And you know, are you sort of paranoid? Well, yeah. I'm just, and I'm missing out on a lot of like good things, if you know what I mean. Right. Because a lot of the fun part of life always there's the threat of uh, rape, you know, sort of looming nearby. Whether it be going to a concert and the walk back through the uh, dark parking lot to the car or going to the ball game. It's always rape. It's always sort of uh, riding shotgun. You, you know what I'm saying, Bruce? In the back of your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always, why, don't, why don't we see what else? That no. sounds like maybe somebody we can help. Uh, yeah, I think we will. But yeah, we're going to go to break. And then uh, we'll be back. Loveline's phone number is 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. We'll be right back. Call Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. That's 1-800-L-O-V-E-1. Hey, hey, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce is uh, board certified. This is the emergency medicine. Oh. That just takes guts. I'll tell you. I, I swear to God, I drive up my street, I see a squirrel that got ran over by a UPS truck. I'm in therapy. Mm -hmm. I don't even go home. I turn around and go right to the therapist's office. I couldn't imagine dealing with what you... The, you, know, you know the worst part? I'm talking about your wife, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you tell me that... Where's the hi-hat? Yeah, where's the hi-hat? All right. No, no the, the worst, worst part God. is once you've got kids. I got a two-year-old at home. Oh, that'd be it. Yeah, you see a two-year-old. I got we got one Thursday, th Wednesday, Thursday night. Two and a half year old comes in, supposedly fell out at the pool two hours before, and now is unconscious and stopped breathing. It fell into the pool. I don't know. Fell at the pool. Fell in the pool. Oh, hit the head on a coping right, or hit something. Hit the head. Uh, oh, so the kid comes in and hit the head, but the butt is like beat red. So you know the kid had been abused. Really? Yeah. Oh. The kid's still on a ventilator, but you just I walk oh. in. You, two years old. Imagine beating the crap out of a two-year-old thing. Oh, so when you... And it's your kid. Imagine. I mean, I'd be reluctant to beat the crap out of someone else's two-year-old. I mean, you know, if, if the kid pushed me. But your own kid. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. So the most difficult thing, it's not the blood and gore, which anybody, it doesn't take somebody very brave or very brazen to get used to that. You, you adjust to that. But some of the things you just never get used to. Also, I... Before I came here tonight, someone had died in a, in a, suddenly in a car accident and family calling in, where's my loved one, oh. and stuff like that. So those oh. are the... Let me tell you, let me tell you why I would not be able to work there if I had a kid. Actually, I couldn't even work there right now, but even if I had a kid, I would see some kid who hit his head in the swimming pool. I would go home, I'd drain the swimming pool, fill it with dirt. <laughs> then uh, the next day, some kid would have uh, smacked his head on rollerblades. I'd go home, take the kid's rollerblades away. And it would just keep going. So eventually, I just uh, raise the kid like a veal in a box. Well, it is very... Uh, it's then some kid come in with like a flesh-eating disease or something, that'd be it. I'd put the kid in a plastic bubble, and he'd have to run around in it. Like, uh, you know, the American gladiators would do on that big cage. You know, he'd get a big bubble. I'd just pump liquid food into it. Well, hopefully, things you see, some things you realize are very unusual. Oh, I see. But abuse, now, it's similar to a lot of stuff we talk about on the show here. You go back, what happened in your family, what happened with your parents, and things are repeated. And that's why with child abuse, it's so common that the individual abusing the child was abused himself. And that's how, why a lot of the public service announcements just to intervene. If you how really, do you determine 
if a kid's been abused? What is your job? What do you have to do? What are you compelled to do you're, by law? You're compelled to, re well, obviously report anything you suspect, and your index of suspicion is very low. And it amounts to many times good parents bringing a child with an injury that is most likely uh, accidental, but you know, you have you have any question, then you call the social worker, and you go in and talk to the patient, and then you go from there. In right. a situation like this, uh, you know, call the police. It's, How it's, do you know the kid's got a red butt? If uh, well, it's a trauma situation. They race in, and you you know, in, in a trauma case like that, then one of the you, you know you, uh, you, gotta, you check the airway the breathing off. It exposes oh, your, uh, your your oh, your basic boy. thing. So no, oh, I could I could never do that. I'd, I'd do a radio show. I'm depressed. I couldn't imagine doing that. Heather. Uh-huh. All right. So is 14 scared to leave the house um, unless she's with a parent because of fear of right? And, uh, but you've never been right, but you're, you're scared of right. Yeah. And what do you think caused this? Well, I'm, well, I'm not quite sure, but I know that my friend, like, she just got, well, she didn't real, she's not really my friend, but I know her from school, and she got raped, and she had to move from a different school. That's why she came to our school. Um, but I don't know if this has anything to do well, with it. Well, it's probably one of the many things that's sort of feeding it for you. It's probably an amalgamation of things, wouldn't you say, Bruce? I mean, it, you know, it's more than one thing. Right. What What's your family situation like? Oh, well, I mean, my family is fine. It's just my dad, I mean, my dad moved up here because they got divorced about three years ago. And I the only, like, abuse I've ever... <laughs> Like, I got sexually abused when I was about five um, by uh, my next-door neighbor. Mm -hmm. Well, that wouldn't factor in, would it, Bruce? I sure. don't think so. Oh, well, okay. Oh, this, what do you, oh, how are your parents... Hold on a second. What do you mean it wouldn't factor in? Of course it would. I mean, I, wouldn't, I don't think about it much. <laughs> well, sure you do. Every You don't want to go out. You, you're scared you're going to get raped. That, that was rape, by the way. I mean, it was... Uh, it, it was uh, abuse and a whole bunch of other things, too. But it was still, I think it, rape would have uh, been included in that, wouldn't you say? Right. It's Now, Heather, when that happened, was it found out about immediately? And did you go to counseling or how that... Uh... Uh, well, not really. My mm. parents were talking about, like, weird things. And so I'm like, well, you think that's weird? Well, wait till you hear this. Because he like, made me... He would grab my hand and, like, make me rub him, you know? Right, and that's just a, you know, it's a horrible thing. It's worse than you realize it is, and it's a violation of your boundaries. And uh, the the outcome, when you have something like that happen, even if it's stopped very quickly, uh, there can be problems down the line. Did it what? happen more than once? Huh? Because I didn't think, I didn't know, you know. Hey, Heather? Yeah. Did it happen more than once? Yeah. Okay. Well, this like is. From, what, do you mean like from him? Oh, okay, from anybody else. Just from him, yeah. Like Just from more him. Than once. But more than once. Yeah. And he was like uh, an adult male who lived next door. Um. Well, he was like kind of old, like in his eighties or something. And is he alive still? I don't think so. Did you ever bring any charges against him? Um. Yeah. We like. I guess the police came when my mom found out. She like called the police and, like, I got like. T like interviewed but I didn't have to go to court or anything and it turned out they got to like decide if like their family decided if he either go to jail or an old people's home so, mm -hmm. so he, he may have picked the old people for him was this Bob Hope by the way <laughs> no okay, okay. So, so Heather how are your obviously your parents realize that you've got this fear of leaving the house without them what did, what's going on with that you talk to your parents about it or no they just think they, they think i just want to stay home or i'm bored i don't know right well listen heather this is 100 percent because of what this guy did to you it is oh yes absolutely it really everyone who's listening right now is nodding their head even the ones that uh that just ingested a bong load or nodding their head so this is an issue that you need to get into and you need to work out because it's now affecting you right. bruce i'm right here right right well I, you know i never yes. say 100 percent this no, is 100 i don't know what else happened to Easy. her there's a lot i don't know about look it, but. when we first heard the call we were confused why is she scared to leave the house for fear of being raped if she's never had anything she says right. it's never been raped right and then 
you realize when you violated. hear the rest of the story, she has been raped. Right. And that's why. And uh, we've learned from this show where there's smoke, there's fire. Right. Speaking of <laughs> smoke, I had to break a little uh, wind there. All right, you're going to pick another call, Bruce, or you're going to sit there and just well, relish we have to in make my sure guess. Heather gets some help. Let's, talk, let's just finish. Heather. What? Oh. Well, what? Okay, Heather. Uh-huh. You, this is something you got to do something about. You need to get some help. Is there somebody like a uh, friend? What should I say? Are you going to school right now? Are you in? No, I'm not. I mean, this is summer break. Okay, you got to talk to your parents, and you need to get help. You need to see a counselor because uh, one of the ways you tell if something's serious is if it affects your activities of daily living like this. I mean, this is at age 14 something that's going to affect your development. It's a very serious problem. It probably is related to something that happened in the past. So. Right. Amy. Uh, yeah. You're 15. Uh-huh. Probably. <laughs> Jesus. What's going on, Amy? Um, yeah. I cannot get a boyfriend. I guess it's because I'm overweight, but when I do, it's usually over the phone. And when we, we, uh, when we meet, it seems that they're more disappointed in me. It's either because of my looks or something. I don't know. How do you meet them over the phone? Um, my friends introduce me, and then we talk for a couple of weeks, but when they meet me, they're like, damn. Your, f your friends introduce you over the phone? Uh-huh. So i got to get some of these friends. And, uh, how tall are you? I'm 5'3". How much do you weigh? Um, 185 pounds. All right. That's big, but it's not too big. Yeah, I know. You're, uh, are your folks big? Uh, no. Actually, they're not. Oh, really? Mm -mm. That's good. <laughs> no, I, I'm serious, because that means, uh, you, you don't have to be big. You know, when your folks are big, you pretty much got to be big. Uh, well, I've lost like 100 pounds since last year. I've been doing really good, but... Wow. I know. <laughs> so you were uh, close to 300 at your peak? Yeah. How'd you lose the 100 pounds? Um, I went on um, Jenny Craig for like um, a couple of years. I, I was on it since I was 13. Wow. Uh-huh. How did you get up uh, so so big? I, I, know, uh, I know it must have been from eating a lot, but... Uh, <laughs> Were you depressed or something? Um, yeah, I had depression, like, really bad. Right. So you, you ate, and uh, so you got up to close to, so you were like 15, and I mean, you were 13 and 300 pounds? Almost. It was horrible. Wow. Uh-huh. Hey, don't, um, Bruce, don't you think at some point your folks got to um, jump in? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, listen, and I know you must have taken some horrible ridicule. I mean, here you are. You're, you're you know, you're 13 years old. You're in, you're in the seventh grade or the sixth grade or whatever the hell you're in. <clears throat> you know, I mean, I was always Brillo head, but, you know, I could put a hat on. I could, um, did you go to a regular public school? Uh-huh. There, there really should be a school for fat kids. <laughs> So they could all just call each other fat ass and yeah. not be tormented by all the skinny people they have to go to school with. Mm -hmm. So that must have been torture for you, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Now, see, my thinking is, is I think the parents are somewhat negligent because you know the abuse that your kid is in for. And when the kid is 12 years old and he's getting up around 250, it's like, as a parent, isn't, isn't it your job to intervene at this point? You know what I mean, Bruce? Right, but remember that there was a one case in the paper, the woman that was being prosecuted when her I don't know, son or I think daughter died uh, of obesity-related complications. Really? Yeah. That's and good. Yeah, what it, it is, except what it did, the detail when you read the story is the daughter had a disease in which she compulsively ate, and it was a very difficult process to control. So, All uh, right, but don't in, you have to get your daughter no. help then for that, for that problem? Well, sure, you should, because obesity, you know... It, it can be considered a disease state, but it's a complex thing. Amy, have you had a medical evaluation? I assume, I'm sure before you went to Jenny Craig, they wanted you to see a doctor. Um, yeah. And so any, any other kind of thyroid problem or anything else like that that started things off, or was it any eating disorder? Uh, it was probably eating disorder because I was really active mm. when I was little before I gained a whole bunch of weight. Here's the good news. All real heavy women are real good looking, or at least according to other women. I was. Okay. No, 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 I don't mean when they're heavy. I just mean every time I see a hefty chick, there's always some other chick who goes, she is so pretty. If she would just lose that weight, she would be so pretty. I think other women like other women when they're heavy because it sort of takes the pressure off of them. But they always think big women are beautiful in the face. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does your wife do that? She is so 
stunning if she could just, you know, it makes them feel big. They never say that about people that are, you know, models. Mm. They just do it about big women who need to lose weight. Bruce, mm. you're no help at all. Oh, to Amy, you're going to be fine. You're 185. You lost 100 pounds over the last two years. Yeah. Well, how are things going? Are you still on the weight loss program? or? Um, actually, I stopped because my dad was going crazy because it cost him an awful lot of money. But i am still got the really good eating habits and everything. Good. But... Where, now, where do, you, where do you live? Um, Gresham. Okay. There are Gresham, Oregon. Oh, what the hell do you know? What are you, Mr. Atlas? <laughs> How do you <laughs> know Charles Gresham? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little skank tone. Okay, listen. It's, first of all, there are programs available that are free, and there are weight programs for teenagers, for kids. Now go to OA. Uh, what? Well, you know, What's funny about that? Oh, nothing. Fifth, was... Fifteen's a tough age, because at your age, people are real looks conscious. You've yeah. obviously got a great personality, and doing things in groups where people... First of all, at, at age 15, you want to have a boyfriend, but you can have a lot of fun doing things in groups. And I don't know if you have a church group or any other kind of group you can get together and do things with and and worry less about the, you know, have to have a guy and go out on a date. Do, so. you, do you like black guys, Amy? <laughs> no. All right. I, I you got to lose one, that. But it all went downhill after that. you got to lose that weight then. Just. <laughs> okay. Do you have a family doctor? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a family doctor? Everyone thinks that's racist, but it's true. Black guys like big women. They're just more accepting that way. <laughs> right, listen, Amy, we we got to wrap up here. Here here's the deal. You're doing great. Uh -huh. you, you got a few more pounds to lose, and and Bruce is right. Guys, uh, still they don't care where you came from. They don't care that you were 300 pounds two years ago. They still care you got a few extra pounds on you. And, and a lot of guys, uh, a lot of guys have a problem with that when they're 15, 16. Uh -huh. And they get a little bit older, they loosen up. So uh, if a guy likes you, great. If if uh, if he doesn't, that happens to everybody. Skinny people uh, get screwed over in relationships all the time. God knows I was the I was a I was a epitome of health in high school. I couldn't get laid to save my life. So, Amy, uh -huh. stick with the diet stuff, and everything's going to fall into place. Okay. All right. Well, I like that, Amy. Sounded all right. What a great summation. What the, the way you just take over? And I do, and I'm right. Of... I God damn it, I'm right. <laughs> And believe me, there's no bigger form of uh, discrimination or abuse than there is against fat people. I know I've given this speech before, but all you uh, different cultures out there and all you different uh, religions out there that are crying the blues because uh, everyone's discriminating against you, put on 100 pounds. That's when the real discrimination begins because everybody discriminates against fat people. You know what I mean? There's a percentage of the world that discriminates against Jews and discriminates against blacks and discriminates against uh, Latinos or whoever. But everybody on some level discriminates so, against fat people. So do you, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, you had your little... Con you wouldn't go out with a 300-pound woman, would well, you? I'm married. So. That's right. You wouldn't have married one, would you? <laughs> I That's would've... right. You wouldn't have. That's right. You're okay. Gonna, you're going to just shut me off here, aren't you? You're going to yes, go to a break. I've right. got something to say after the break. All so. right. Maybe the next break. Uh, oh yeah! Everybody now. Yes, I will be right back. Loveline will be right back. Hi, this is Victoria Silstead, Playboy Playman of the Year, and you are listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes. That woman is just uh, like like some sick Disney cartoonist sat down and, and mapped out uh, the perfect woman. She's just uh, big and bubbly and blonde, and if she grew up in uh, Canoga Park or some other uh, dump in the valley... She'd be ruined. But she grew up on, um, is, he, is Sweden an island? <laughs> don't, don't ruin it. The small island known as Sweden, where everyone is blonde and good-looking, and they just frolic in the nude. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Dream on. Yeah. She has a ton of fun, too. She's all, I mean, if she's European, and for some reason, it's hard for us Americans to figure out, like, when someone in Europe is dizzy or dumb or something. I think she's considered the dumbest person in her village, but out here she's she's a genius. 
You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know. He's got this great accent and everything. He doesn't, you know, chew gum and, you know, real hot. As a matter of fact, oh, I remember the night, the night she was on the show, um, I was supposed to go with my girlfriend to uh, Las Vegas the following day. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got home, there was a little message on the phone machine that said, uh, why don't you take uh, Victoria <laughs> Silvstead to Vegas with you? And for a second, I got excited. I was like, oh, what? who'd you? Oh, she's pissed. You put it together. Uh, yeah, so I understood. Yeah, your girlfriend's got good boundaries and good self. Yeah, I thought for a minute she was working some working a deal, or she knew someone over at Playboy or something, and then I realized she was mad. You see, she's smarter than you. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, she can't be that smart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's with me, hmm. Brandon. Yeah. Hey, you're 17. Doctor Bruce is filling in for Doctor Drew. Yeah. Um, uh, All right, I don't like Brandon's attitude. <laughs> Our listeners just have zero um, the decorum. They just have no idea how to respond to things or do anything. I swear to God, every night I'll have a band on and I'll go, yeah, we're on with the sneaker pimps. And uh, whoever the caller is goes, so. They can't even go like, hey, all right. See, it's not just me. No, I, rude, no. Your, your listeners are No, just, sometimes I'll say to them, uh, Hey, uh, yeah, we're we're on uh, with the Deftones. What do you think of the record? And they'll go, it's okay. <laughs> they, they can't even just do that. Uh, hey, great. Y you know what I mean? So ah, I that's great. How you doing? Well, that's right, Brandon. Right. Brandon. Yeah. Hey, Bruce is filling in for Drew. Cool. Okay. <laughs> that was a little better. All right, what's your problem? Uh, yeah, um, me and my girlfriend, uh, we had sex. And then, like, two days later, she, like, dumped me. And uh, she, like, gave me this lame reason, like, uh, her, her best friend said uh, that we were conflicting. And, you know, she said she didn't want to lose her best friend or anything. But I think it's just because I got a um, very small penis. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Could be the penis. I smell bogus call there, by mm -hmm. the way. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. But you're better at that than I. Uh, Drew's better than both of us. Now, here's my here's what I always think about these bogus calls. If uh, if Brandon's not the one with the small penis, somewhere in America, there's somebody listening to this show as a small penis, and uh, other than engineer Brett is filling in for uh, engineer Mike, and they have been hurt by it. So, here's my answer to Brandon, even though I think Brandon's calls a little bogus. Uh, women normally don't care about this, so there's something going on. And if she dumped you, I know it sounds uh, Pollyanna-ish, but if she dumped you because you had a small penis, then uh, she's um, she's a little bit shallow and did you a favor. As a matter of fact, actually, if she was shallow, it'd probably work itself oh. out, you know. A little crotch humor. Okay. So yeah. what a funny penis you've got. It's very peculiar. That's Rod Stewart talking about the penis. Is that right? That's him. Hmm. Pete. Hello? You're 19. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, well, I was... I went camping with some people up in a, a house, and one night we were sleeping, uh, and I had to share a bed, you know, and we were in like a, you know, like the, we we had to share a bed, so um, I was sleeping, and I really couldn't get to sleep, you know, so there's this guy sitting, uh, sleeping next to me, you know, and I, he like started touching my butt, you know, touching my rear end. Yeah. And I'm like, I was so shocked and like, uh, I, I was shaking her and I didn't know what to do. And I'm not sure if I could, should confront the person or what I should do. How, how old's the person? Same age. You're both 19? Yeah. Is this somebody that's a friend of yours? Someone you yeah, knew before this? Yeah. Yeah. Was he drinking? Uh-uh. Let me tell you what goes on when you get out in the wilderness. In a house. Okay, but even any time you hear crickets, oh. <laughs> you just start going nuts sexually. You just start, you'll feel anybody. I, I'm totally, you ought to do this test. Take um, men, um, God-fearing, good, upstanding citizens, and um, set up a pup tent like a lab, mm -hmm. and then put them in there with their uh, grandmother or daughter. I bet they don't make it the night without trying to cop a feel. Oh. I swear to God. I don't want to know more There's about something about camping that makes guys uh, into copping a feel. Is this based on your family uh, behavior? I'm, I'm, no, we didn't go camping. The Corollas don't camp. Okay. But believe me, living at my house was like camping. Uh, you know, lawn up to here, place was a dump. 
Believe me. I was like every, your father once. Actually. Every day was camping at the Corolla house. Your father seemed perfectly normal. He's normal now. Oh, okay. Okay, so Pete, is is this somebody you're continuing to see on a social or business basis? No, or what's really. This? No. Uh, you, you're not going to see the guy again? Uh-uh. And why do you think you froze up, Pete? I, it was just like I could not believe that, that well, how that person mu- would do that. How much goosing did he do? Uh, not much. I, I, you know, I just pretended I woke up and didn't do anything. Oh, and then he stopped? Yeah. Have you had any abuse issues in the past or mo- were you molested? Uh, no, I or? haven't. Uh-uh. All right. Okay. Well, all right. No, you don't see the guy much. Yeah. You know. And I had one more question. For That's you. fine. Uh, but by the way, this is why I always go to bed with a fart <laughs> saved in case there's any trouble. Yeah. You um, know? I had one more question uh, for the doctor. Um, I'm a pre-med student. Uh-huh. And I was wondering uh, what classes should I be taking? In pre-med? Yeah. Well... I don't want to. I don't want to tell you when I took pre-med. They probably uh, <laughs> they don't even have the same classes anymore. Well, basically, there should be a. Where do you go to school? Uh, do you? Denver. Oh well, there's usually a pre-med club, a pre-med advisor, but it's usually general biology, chemistry. I don't know what else. Stats, there. physics, statistics, physics, organic, general chemistry, general biology, general chemistry, no. physics, organic, oh. and ah. calculus, and then I'd be the world's worst doctor. I uh, no, I wouldn't be a doctor. I failed biology, you know. You should. Well, you show some uh, abilities in the psychiatric realm. Oh, please, because I'm smarter than all these idiots. <laughs> and uh, you people sitting home with your big fat degrees in psychology, I kick all your asses. And let me say this: I do an interview every once in a while, and they all say, "We know what Drew's qualifications are, but what is your qualification for giving out advice on the show? I mean, what gives you the right? You hold no degree. You didn't even. You went to junior college for six months and scored some weed, and then you went back home again. <laughs> what gives you the right?" And I say to him this: I said, "Listen, who do you want working?" I, I said. I built houses for a living. Did I ever go to school to build a house? Did I ever read a book? No. I built houses. I learned because I did it. And do you want, who, who would know better what's going on with the screwed up teenagers? Someone who talks to 2,000 of them a year or someone who reads a book on screwed up teenagers? Mm-hmm. That's right. Now I tell them to shut their cake hole before I start in on them. Okay. Bruce, you enjoying yourself? Oh, have a marvelous time. Great. Be right back. All right, Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew, doing a wonderful job. Quit patronizing me, turkey. <laughs> turkey. <laughs> Who are you, George Jefferson? Oh. <laughs> you jive, turkey. All right, we'll uh, we'll be back in ten seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. KROQ FM, Pasadena, Los Angeles. The world famous K Rock. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Corolla. That's Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce, Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew out enjoying, or I should say celebrating, I'm not sure if he's enjoying it, his um, anniversary. Where'd they go? Mm. I'm sure he wouldn't tell you, though, actually. I wouldn't. Well, she's in rehab, so I think he just went to visit her. <laughs> oh, you're, <No>. you're terrible. <laughs> oh. Uh... Somewhere uh, somewhere local, somewhere nice, so, you know. Oh, yes, they're the four-season twins. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. Drew does not know what it's like to stay at the, uh, you know, Red Roof or uh, Days Inn or Motel 6 until we hit the road. Then we're sharing a room at some uh, godforsaken I don't dump out. I don't believe Drew ever shared a room with you. Sorry. No, he doesn't. Uh, he, he doesn't. But he, he does get a room next to me, and I get to go bang on the door. Don't ever travel with Dr. Drew. He wants to experience every 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 um, thing in every town. He wants to he wants to work out at every gym and every every hotel you go to. He does stuff like. Um, when I was fourteen. I tried to be straight, or I thought I should be straight. And I was confused. He does you stuff know. like he, he he talks to the uh, you know the bellhop, finds out where the closest gym is, and then tries to schedule some shuttle from the hotel over to the gym at you know seven thirty in the morning because we got to leave for the airport at nine, and we don't get home till you know two in the morning. And he went, <sighs> huh? And all I do is complain. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Joel. Oh, and he wants to talk to every kid. Every time we go to one of these colleges to lecture, he wants to talk to every kid about the uh, campus life. You know what I'm talking about? And what do you want to talk to him about? I don't want to talk to these yeah, kids. So, 
So in other words, the, the public relations. Yeah, Drew wants handle. to know what the what the enrollment is, and is that undergrad? I'm like, I don't know who the half cares. Would you just shut up and let the kid drive the car? Joel. Oh, hello. Hey, you're 31. Joel? Yeah. I mean, Joe. <laughs> I thought you been said Joel. Chat. I thought you were talking to someone no, else. I'm yeah. sorry. I just looked up. He is. Okay. I'd like to begin by thanking you. I like your show a lot. Thanks, Joel. You help a lot of people with a lot of problems. Yeah. But I've got an issue. All right. Um, back when I was 22... I was involved with some things I shouldn't have been, and I ended up getting abducted by a cult and uh, tormented quite a bit, traumatized mainly by this one female I considered a witch. And the result was uh, PTSD that uh, was diagnosed years later, and I've had a hard time uh, showing my feelings to women. I was wondering what you guys suggest about it. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder? Yeah. Wow. That was good. I never hear it as uh, PTSD. Uh, all right, well, tell us the story. What cult was this? I don't know. They didn't tell me. In fact, uh, they kept me pretty naive. Well, they kept me uh, loaded pretty good. Mm-hmm. So I participated in that. That's uh, I see my part in that. Um, maybe it was the SLA. It was the folks who got Patty Hearst. Yeah, CBN I've heard about that, that, too. You mean, oh, I thought you were saying S... Yes, uh, no, no. RA, which is satanic ritual abuse. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well, listen, listen. What, what, were you a drug addict back then? Oh, yeah. And so you got hooked up with some people, and they took you to, uh, where was their cult? They kept me in an apartment, mostly, mm -hmm. in, uh, down in Southern California. And what were they trying to do with you? I mean, what good traumatizing. Because I, I had my little, kind of own little cult. I was a dealer, and I had quite a few little followers. And I think they were trying to track me or recruit me, and, uh... I ended up suicidal when they were done with me. How how long were they with you? Uh, they had me for about ten days. The thing was, I got away from them. Somehow they found me where I, I thought I I was gone for good, and they found me somehow. How did you get away from them? I left and uh, oh, you left. So we hitched a ride, went up to where I hung out, and was concealed. And next thing I know, they're right out front. Well, uh, maybe part of the problem was going back to where you hung out. Yeah, you know that that somehow. Sometimes a lot of places, folks are easier to find, though, when they go to where they hang out. When you're going to look for them, you go to look for them where they hang out. You know. Okay, so Joel, you're you're 31. This is nine years ago. Yeah. And this has been a persistent problem since that time. Yeah. And you went through therapy, or was this abduction reported to the police? No, I went straight to the net house. You know, I was uh, hospitalized within a week. Well, he was dealing drugs, so he wasn't right. going to call. So you're using. Time. I was very sick. You're using speed, I suspect, if you're yeah. Southern California, and yeah. you're paranoid and. No, no, no drug. I was, I, I was in straight psychosis and pretty right. much lost. They abused me so, so. Well, what did they do to you? Well, they uh, exposed me to an old treasure chest-looking thing and pulled out shackles and chains, and I thought they were going to torture me. Um, they brought me out to some lonely haunted house way out in the hills with the full moon. Mm -hmm. That was the, when they got me first, and that that scared me to death. Were you were you high on speed the whole time? Yeah. Yeah, that's a bitch. Okay, so are you just no, going down to the market can be a pretty can be pretty, pretty harrowing experience when <laughs> so, you're high on speed. All that, all that fluorescent lighting, you know, and the music. Okay, so yeah, but they had they had other intents. I've got, I've talked to quite a few people involved with certain things. Read quite a few books, and but the thing the the, the problem is I, that's all in the past. I'm in recovery now and have been so for a while. But the thing is, it's my feelings. I I'm there's I have a fear of women uh, that I never had before. And yeah, all right. Well, where where's your mom? Um, she lives um, mm. in the area. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Her and your dad get divorced. No. Yeah. Was she all right to you when you're growing up? Oh yeah. Yeah, she was. Oh yeah. But well, why do you think you turned into a uh, drug addict? Um, I have a uh, biochemistry imbalance. Okay. I probably medicate myself over. Okay. You know, we find these things out. So who was doing most of the torturing? The woman? Yeah, she had me most of the time. Did you get to have sex with her? No, nope. she was not oh. attractive. Not, she wasn't. What's not at all, and I think that was part of it. I don't know. See, I saw this uh, episode of The Fall Guy where they had this cult, but the chicks were hot. Yeah. Oh, I wish. Uh, yeah. In this case, no. she um, yeah, very well, unhealthy looking was and she, very creepy looking. Were, there, were any of them fat? <laughs> Cause no, that... actually, she was pretty uh, sucked up. Okay, so she was, uh, she was uh, slender. Well, yeah. Just okay, right. I just want to make sure it wasn't the Wicca. <laughs> 
Federal agent. I've now uh, I've I've now checked Wicca off my cult list. Uh, are we going to go through a, a whole mm -hmm. list? <laughs> well, I, if the women weren't weren't heavy set, uh, I you know there's certain cults I can I can cross off and um, Wicca. So one some of them. some cults have attractive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Abusers and some. Have and some have heavy set ones. Okay. Wicca being. Okay. Them. Are, are we going to get back to Joel and ask him no. like a summation question? No, here? no. We didn't spend enough time with Joel. Okay. He's all right, right? Uh, oh, oh, I got to get my next uh, my yes. next call here. All right, let's. Uh, see let me say I'm something. Done. Hey, Joel. Yeah. All right. So, what do you want to do? I just want to have some solutions as to why why my my feelings are so unexpressible, and there's a fear of approaching women now. Well, you know, just like somebody who got um, attacked by a dog, I, I guess uh, you have a fear of dogs, you know? That's, that's a good parallel. Yeah, Help. now, but, you know, your thing is, is this happened when you're 22, so it's kind of like, well, you don't have as good a, as an excuse as if it would have happened when you're two, but on the other hand, you're high on drugs, so uh, your, your mind was sort of vulnerable. This is going to take some therapy. Yeah. Are you on any medication at this time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, and you've talked to your therapist about it or your psychiatrist? Because it gets yeah, pretty... the uh, persistent problem is nightmares. Right. Oh, yeah. Aren't being always killed. Hey, do you have a female therapist? No. You ought to get a female therapist. I had one, but I left San Diego. Uh, you know what? I just got diagnosed with PTSD along with bipolar. I I know they only used to be in San Diego, but they've branched <laughs> out. They're they're there's in LA and some are getting as far north as Oregon now. Although we've got to put a stop to it. <laughs> yeah, go find a female shrink. It's important to see a female if you're having trouble with females. Yeah. Well, yes, absolutely. of course it is. And no, certainly uh, there are cult abuse issues that uh, cults. You know these things do happen. Sounds, right. Sounds sort of. Uh, now, let me just ask. Uh, make sure real um, quick. Joel, was it Scientology? <laughs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> just want to make sure. All right. Don't laugh at that. They got pissed last night. I know. Drew called them a cult. Oh, and he did. Oh, Drew did. Yeah. Well, they are. Oh, now you're getting a letter. Uh, oh, I don't. And you're think screwed. So. <laughs> Nobody knows who I am. They wrote a big <laughs> long letter for Drew to apologize. And as a matter of fact, not only that, the Scientologist, uh, uh, the head of the uh, PR guy over there, he worked out a whole uh, on-air scenario. Whereas uh, I brought it up to Drew, and then he brought it up, and he worked out a script for us. Oh, whatever. I, when I was in medical school, I went down to their. They had a place in, over in Riverside, and I went down there, and certainly it was like indoctrination. A group, four of us went, and they split us up into four different rooms. Really? And just started pounding, is there anything you'd like to change in your life? Is there anything that's not the way it should be? Blah, 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 blah. Right. It's, it's just, but, the you know, tactics seem to be... To be fair to um, the uh, Scientologist, I went to a uh, Herbal Life meeting once, and it was really the same treatment. So, But they want you to sell Herbal Life. Oh, well, that's... Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's right. So. Ken... Hey, what's going on there, Holmes? Yeah. You're 14. Yeah, I'm 14. Okay, um, well, about three months ago, uh, I was kind of, not actually dared, but, like, my girlfriend said that it'd be kind of kind of cool to, like, get the end of my penis pierced. Right. And uh, I was kind of embarrassed to, like, go to a place to have it done. Sure. So, like, uh, I got one of, like, I found a place that you can get, like, them self-piercing kits. And uh, I tried it, and uh, since then, I haven't been able to get an erection. Uh. Self piercing kits. Where the, oh, I don't even want to ask where they sell those. <laughs> well, in yarn stores. It's a, they're just the crocheting needles, all this, right? Okay. What, what comes in a self piercing kit? Uh it's it almost it looks similar to a stapler pretty much and then you just like it's like magnetic, the ma earring like sticks to it and then you just like squeeze it like a stapler. Oh, you mean like at the mall where they do your earlobe? Yeah, pretty much. And okay. they just squeeze that thing, pop pop? Yeah. Uh, so did, isn't there a big thing though on the side of those? I thought some legislation went through where they had to uh, do a, a large penis on the side and then a big red slash going through it. So uh, <laughs> screwed up teenagers wouldn't put those on their penises. So okay, Ken, what happened when you did? You have a lot of bleeding when you did this, or did well, do you still have something in there? Well, actually, that's like the thing. I wasn't sure if it was from the reason I couldn't get an erection. Well, what I did, I um, I tried to like rubber banded a little bit so it wouldn't hurt so bad and then uh, I tried it there wasn't really much bleeding at all you rubber banded it how'd you do that just like tried to put a uh, rubber band kind of tight just so I wouldn't uh, feel it like a tourniquet yeah around uh, the base part yeah okay do you have access to a doctor obviously you haven't seen a, seen a doctor for it yet no I, I was kind of embarrassed to go to a doctor 
Yeah. Let me tell you something. This is not the strangest thing whatever doctor you go to has ever seen, and it's part of part of what doctors do to see things that are embarrassing to people. Um, oh, boy. You know, and if you need to go in and tell them you're there for a sore throat, it whatever you need to do to get past the embarrassment part to where you're actually talking to a doctor, because this is something that's got to be examined by a doctor. So, Ken, yeah. let me just get this uh, thing straight. You put the rubber band around the penis. Yeah. Have you taken the rubber band off, by the way? Yeah. Okay, good. Because, you know, when uh, a friend of mine who is uh, in, like, uh, agriculture class told me to, to uh, get the uh, cow's nuts to fall off or the bull's nuts to fall off or whatever it is, they just put a rubber band around it and eventually just fall off. I swear to God. Do you know about that? Uh, you weren't 4-H? No. <laughs> No, I've never heard All of it. All right, anyway, Ken. Um, so you put the rubber band around it. Yeah, it wasn't for very long. Time. Right, oh, I see. And then you took this device and you shot it through uh, what part? Uh, basically, just right at the top. Right at the top? You like mean? right through, like on, on the right side of it. On the right side of the penis? Yeah. But I on these devices, when you shoot the stud in, don't you need to put a backer on the stud? I mean, don't wouldn't it have to go all the way through? Uh, yeah, it, it, like, you put, like, the stud on it. It wasn't... How'd you get the stud on it, though? Uh, it wasn't really very that far down. It was just, like, the, it basically just went through a little bit of the skin. I it see. I see. You're but just... I'm not sure if it's more of a mental thing or a physical thing. How long ago was it? Uh, three months ago. Yeah, all right. Uh, and it, does it seem infected now? Not really, no. It, it's, I mean, I've, like, tried wearing, like, a ring in it, but it's just very uncomfortable. Okay, right. Ken, do you have access to a doctor? In yes, any... I do. Okay. All right, I... don't talk to him. You got to talk to him. Why do people want to pierce things these days? His girlfriend made him do it. Hmm. Let me tell you something. I don't care if um, somebody uh, dug up uh, uh, Marilyn Monroe and uh, Jane Mansfield, and they came over and begged me to put something sharp into my penis. I would not do it. Do you understand that? Yeah, I fully understand that. I make it my life's work to keep sharp things away from my penis. I wake up every morning and I think then I go to bed at night and I think, how can I keep sharp things away from my penis while I'm asleep? That's why I sleep on my stomach. I don't even sleep on my back. I don't want to risk something sharp hitting my penis, a meteor or something. You know what I'm saying? Have you shared this with your significant other, the fear? It's none of our goddamn business! Mm. Okay. What a funny penis you've got. It's very peculiar. Ryan. Yeah. You're 17. Yeah, I was just uh, actually wondering about drinking the water out of the bottom of a marijuana bong and why you get so messed up off it. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that well, I'm, I'm going to, I know this is a stretch, but, uh, and I'm no doctor and I'm no chemist, but I'm guessing, uh, could it possibly be because of the tremendous volume of marijuana that has passed through the water? Could that be uh, well, some sort I'm, of correlation I'm, there? I'm, I'm just wondering, does the water actually just absorb all of the marijuana and hold it in the water? I, I was told once that, or I actually heard on, a, on another radio show, <laughs> uh, that, that, that a bong took some of the THC out of the marijuana. And it, it's too bad Dooley's not here tonight because he, you know, he could really set us straight, but... Uh, Probably at home smoking weed. <laughs> we should bum us high and call him up. But the point is, is I heard that uh, that the THC got trapped in the water. That's what I hear. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not all of it, obviously, but the, that it took some of it out of it. So maybe logically it could be in there. Uh, on the other hand, maybe this is something that doesn't need to be examined too closely. Yeah. You're sucking off a bong like it was a tumbler, and you're getting effed up. Ryan, how often do you smoke um, or drink? I don't, I don't at all. Oh. Just What's, okay. I've experiences I know that have smoked bowls and bowls and bowls off the same bong, and then they've drank the water, and then they just seem to get so much more messed up off just drinking the water than they have off the marijuana itself. Well, yeah, but you, you, mm, by the time they're ready yeah. to drink water out of a bong, they're probably more messed up than they realize yeah, they are. That's the problem with most people that are using drugs. Yeah, they're not quite a... You got to be pretty high to drink drink out of the bong. Even the dog won't drink. You know, the dog will drink out of the toilet, but he stays away from the bong. Think about that. That's a great. You write that down, yeah, man. So I'm right. Take notes on that.
Bruce is constantly trying to figure out new and uh, innovative ways to keep kids uh, off the drugs. Aren't you? Well. Isn't that what you deal with? I do. Uh-huh. But You uh, ever heard of anyone drinking bong water? Oh, well, I think there's very little I haven't heard. Maybe I've, that's why my friends would get so pissed when I knocked over the bong. I always thought it was because it got into the carpet. But now that I look back on it. They were saving it for themselves. Yeah, that was like, yes. <laughs> can imagine drinking well, there are all kinds of misnomers about marijuana smoking from, you know, it's uh, it's not addictive and uh, it's smoking through a, a bong with various types of liquid affect the high you get. The bottom line is, you know, you're getting, uh, you're inhaling smoke. Not only is the, uh, the, the substances that you inhale, not only are they addictive, but there are a lot of different chemicals. It's not just the THC. Right. And... The carbon monoxide that's in the smoke, that's something I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but one of the problems with smoking any substance is the carbon monoxide and the effect it has on blood vessels. But when you're talking to, you know, when I'm talking to teenagers about smoking or drinking or anything else like that, the, the one thing that doesn't work is any kind of scare tactics, and that's why it's so difficult. And Yeah. Your best if you come up with some little kind of creature like a dog in a trench coat, and he can explain to the kids why they shouldn't smoke the wheat. Oh, yeah. That's Those effective. Are, oh, you see, yeah. now you got a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> listen, here's the deal with uh, pots. No different. No, listen, no, pot's no different than booze or anything. It really isn't. Uh, it's no different than uh, Derwiner Schnitzel chili dogs, which is uh, once in a while is fine. Every single day, mm, there's going to be some uh, adverse effects. But I, you know, and I know Drew's probably mentioned this. There are a lot of people I talk to. It seems like stopping smoking pot occurs in your 30s for a lot of people. They say, "I want to quit smoking this." And when you ask them, they'll, "When did you start?" They'll say, "As a teenager." What was your first experience like? And they'll say it was like a, a something lit up in my brain. Uh, I felt the way I always wanted to feel. It was actually your bangs that were on fire. But uh, go ahead. Yeah. And there's a uh, there's a different effect that you get with somebody that becomes a daily pot right. smoker. That uh, you know the uh, the reasoning why not? There's no problem trying it once. It's never killed anybody. But in certain individuals that are predisposed, they try it once and it's that's it's right. Daily, uh, Absolutely. Okay. That there's the people that have that uh, gene. Hey, it's uh, it's uh, they can't stop gambling. They can't stop um, having uh, bizarre ritualistic sex. Uh, they can't stop the smoking. They can't stop drinking. Uh, they can't stop a lot of things. And uh, when you introduce pots, that's just one more thing they can't stop. Pretty good, huh? That's very good. Aaron, you're 17. How's it going? Good. Um, I'm from Portland. I just wanted to first time caller. Great. Um, I have this problem. Um, seems like I attract girls that are too young or too old for me. Mm-hmm. Um, like how, how old's the oldest? 24, 25. Mm-hmm. Um, What's brother, the youngest? Uh, 13. Uh-huh. And, yeah. right? Yeah, my brother, we'll see, I have a younger brother who's 14, so he has sometimes friends over oh. and their girls, and, like, right. he, he, after they leave, he goes, gosh, um, my friend said that he wants to know if you, if you think she's cute. Yeah. Well, it, that's... He's bummed, he's bummed because, you know... I know, but listen, everybody is attracted to everybody's uh, older brother. Yeah. That's uh, that's what it is. Like I didn't brother. I didn't have a younger brother, but I ha I had this uh, inflatable younger brother I'd put in the window, and then I would st you know kid you know looked about thirteen fourteen when I was uh, seventeen eighteen. And they'd come over and see hang them. out, lure the chicks in, they'd immediately go for me, and uh, that was my plan. How close are you to being uh, eighteen? Um, uh, about eight months. I, I, my birthday's in eight. <laughs> months. A lot of guys think they have this. I, I had this. Everyone's moms uh, liked me. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Everyone you like, their moms like you. Yeah. Yeah. I it, Listen, it's a curse. And, you know, now that I'm 34, it's everyone's grandparents. <laughs> oh, that's, that's bad. Pretty soon when I'm in my 60s, it'll be people's ancestors that were attracted to me. Well, at either end of the spectrum you're on, you don't want to get involved, mm -hmm. especially well, yeah, no, if you're... I, yeah, so you I don't... Mean, now that I'm not in school, I mean, uh, it's, it's even t tougher, you know. Um, like when I'm in school, I always I try to... You know, get involved with girls my age, and it just doesn't seem to work. You know. All right. Yeah. It, it it girls your age that like there's a little bit of a um, handicap that uh, 17, 18 year old guys go through. Ah, let me say this. I know we're running late for break, but I have I have a, a thought. 
You know, when you're th when you're 13, 14, whatever, you're in junior high, 15, whatever you are, you, you pretty much go out, the guys go out with the girls in the junior high. And when you're uh, you know, 19, 20, 21, 22, you go out with the chicks in the college. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In your dorm, wherever you are. But... When you're uh, 17, 18, a lot of your 17, 18-year-old girls are going out with the guys in college, too. You see? And you can't head down and go, go out with a 13 or 14-year-old when you're 17, 18 in high school. You can't go down to the junior, uh, junior high level. So it's a tough couple of years in there. I mean, statistically, ooh, statistically, you, you got your work cut out for you. On the other hand... Uh, there are those who do and those who don't. We all went to high school with a guy who did, and he never had any problem at any any age group. You know what I'm saying, Bruce? Mm -hmm. So, eh, this is going to correct itself when he goes off to college, and then he's just trapped with a bunch of 19-year-old uh, chicks. All right, until then. Pro profound. Don't concentrate on it. Love line. Call and Dr. Drew. The phone number is one. Yeah, except for Dr. Drew's not here. Dr. Bruce is filling in quite nicely for Dr. Drew. Dr. Bruce, beside, you know, being my bitch, is a board-certified physician. And uh, you're also an addiction medicine specialist, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you're like you're kind of like a square Dr. Drew, right? Right. Dr. Drew is kind of the Hollywood version of you. Well, you know, he's an internist. The internist, the doctor's doctor. They're just... I mean, if you're making a movie, Dr. Drew would play you. Huh? You know, if they're making a movie on your life? Which is unli highly unlikely. No, I know. It's never going to happen. Unless you blow up some federal building or something. Are you thinking about doing that? No. I Okay. Well, I then save someone's life or... No, no. That's something. not going to do it. you got to blow something up. Tattoo removal. I'm doing that. How you like oh, that? really? Yeah. How's that going? It's doing it in the emergency department on gang members, former gang members. Got really? a program started. That's very a good program. Yeah. Actually, and it's very unusual to be having that done in an emergency department. What do you do with it? Laser? Yeah. How's that work? That's fun. They actually let me do it. <laughs> How much does that laser cost? The lasers run seventy five hundred thousand bucks. Hundred thousand? Mm hmm. I think it? about buying one. <laughs> and then you could sort of like self mutilate with it, huh? Does that have to do with <laughs> masturbation? <laughs> surely surely it could in your case. Now, what, how does it work? How does laser uh, tattoo removal work? Well, you know, it's really interesting. I, in my ignorance, before I got involved in this, thought that in some way that it blasted the uh, ink out of the skin in some way. But actually what it does is the uh, ink is dispersed by the laser, and the reason the ink stays in the dermis and the skin is because it cannot be removed by your macrophages, the cells that come in and take away foreign bodies and thing, other things in your Why can't it? It's too large. The droplets are too large. So what the laser does, it breaks up the droplets into smaller droplets that the macrophages, the cells, the white type of white blood cells can come in and take away. So you have to repeat the procedure. So you do it once every about a couple of months. So, so it, like instead of um, the thing that said um, 18th Street Gang being on your upper arm, it's now in your colon? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I hadn't thought of it that way. It's interesting. But it takes multiple... Now, so when the laser hits it, you don't see anything for a little while. The little white blood cells got to come in and do their mop up, Well, there's, right? there's heat released and there's a change in the skin. So you do see a change in the skin. And then over the, you get a little blistering redness, right. sometimes a little bleeding. And over the next several weeks as that heals, actually heals in a few days, it's, there's a, a lightening effect on the tattoo. But professionally done tattoos can take 10, 15 treatments take a lot of treatments really and the ones done uh by people in there what about the uh eiffel tower that i have on my penis <laughs> I, I, would, would that take a while i think it'd be unlikely anybody it's would actually, want to tackle that yeah. uh, <laughs> it's not it's not i couldn't it's not really the whole tower but at least the base of the eiffel tower that i have on my penis you ever uh, do it on anyone's penis no actually we're limiting it to hands arms neck and face places that show gang right to help okay. a lot of guys to get out of the gang, they want to get a job and right. I understand, and uh, though that they could work at a video store, that would help. They actually help them. I, oh yes, yeah. that's how video stores work. But let me ask you one more question: Is this laser the same laser that they use for other cosmetic uh, functions? This laser can be used for certain pigmented lesions. Uh, it there's the next generation of the machine we have. 
uh, you can do hair removal with it. Oh, really? Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking to do that. <laughs> could you do my ass? Oh, I think I would How take Drew's would it stand take to do and my ass? If kick it, you out of my office. If it takes 15 quickly. visits to do a, a, a quarter-sized tattoo on some kid's forearm... Can you imagine the the life's work that my ass would be? Uh, judging by the bush in your head, if your <laughs> butt has any... Oh, please. Now, don't get insulting. Never been so outraged. Sean, remember, you're a Christian man, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, Sean. Adam, I have to say something, that you are one of the coolest humans on the face <laughs> of the planet Earth. All right, finally. Spend, yes. an, uh, so spend a couple hours with him. The respect that I ben long for me. and deserve. Okay, so I've heard something from my friends that there's a certain frog that if you lick its back or something, that you get an LSD trip. Yeah. Have you heard about this? Yeah, it's this little piece of tissue paper. It's got a frog stamped on it. Oh, okay. I no. thought it was a real frog. Now, th this is uh, frog licking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you uh, lick a uh, goat's testicles, it'll be the same effect. Oh, that's pleasant. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's all sorts of frogs that got all sorts of weird stuff. I was watching the Discovery Channel the other night, and they have these frogs that, like, uh, whatever whatever secretes from their skin is, like, uh, 300 times more venomous than a rattler is. Oh, God. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, here's my point. You could lick a frog and die, couldn't you? Yeah, I think so. Hey, Bruce, mm, not, couldn't yeah. you lick a frog and die? I, I suspect you could. All right, so, you know, here's the deal. Is it a toad or a frog? What's Sean. the difference? I'm not sure if it's a toad or a frog. I, I just heard I just heard frog. Frogs are bigger? Yeah, frogs are bigger. Toads are smaller and they're bumpier. Hey, Sean. Yeah? What city do you live in? San Jose, California. Hey, can I say hi to everybody from Archbishop Mitty High School? No. Oh, hey, okay, can't fine. you score some LSD? Not from a Catholic school. Oh, okay. All right, well, don't, don't do any drugs. Don't lick any frogs. They're... Here's the deal. I don't know where you people are living, but, you know... Go down to the park and get some drugs. You know what I mean? Don't go down to the pond and start licking stuff. Well, there there is a toad that's that has an excretion that's hallucinogenic. There is. Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Uh, I forget the name. Oh, I knew it at one time, but you don't want to give it out. Uh, You're scared yeah, just, it'll corrupt the kids. Well, you know, it's the the things you don't see medically on a regular basis. You sort of forget, and I just did. You I haven't had many toads. Have you ever had some guy come in uh, who licked the wrong frog? I've. Well, people, yeah, people that tend to be into hallucinogens seem to like to try a lot of sources for it, so. Yeah, it's weird about uh, drugs and people, which is, uh, you wouldn't eat something out of the dog's bowl, you wouldn't eat something that fell onto the ground, but uh, when it comes to drugs, man, oh, people don't eat anything. Some oh, guy climbs out of a van in a, in a parking lot and then wearing an army jacket, and pulls a toad out of his pocket, and then people are all tongues. I did LSD 50 times right. in two years. All right, all on true. <sighs> oh, Drew doesn't even remember that night. <laughs> did you know they did LSD that much? Uh-oh. Who, who did LSD? Drew, you heard him. Fifty times in two years. No, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, jeez. I was... Oh, uh, all right. Forget it. Are right, you ready to move on? Ready to move on. Sh uh, Shandy? Shandy. Shandy. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that you are very mistaken about Wiccans. Uh-oh. I knew this would happen. Because you said earlier on in the show that Wiccans were fat and it was a cult. And it's not a cult, it's a religion. And I'm Wiccan and I'm very thin. Listen, any religion that doesn't have that many members is a cult. That's, That's the way it works. you got to have at least um, a million people. Otherwise, it's a... Uh, I'm upping it to five million. Otherwise, it's a cult. See what I'm saying? No, That's the only difference. Not. If you could get these hail bop guys, if they had several hundred million uh, people following them, it would be a religion. Listen, Christianity and Judaism is just as screwed up as any cult is, and just as nonsensical with all the uh, gar garbage symbolism and all this other uh, BS about the you know, parting of the Red Sea and Jesus is crying and uh, hiding the matzah and all this nonsense. I mean, you know, seriously, if you said this was a cult, if some guy called and started explaining it to you, you'd, you'd call it a cult. But if you get enough people on board, it officially becomes a religion, you see? A wicked is still a cult. doesn't have enough people to be a religion. Well, now, as far as the heavy set thing, I've never met any. Uh, I've never met a Wicca under one eighty. I just haven't. How many Wiccans have you met? At least two, hmm. maybe three. Well, then you couldn't really say. Oh, sure, I can. I have, uh, three, three Wiccas. Well, how big are you? I'm five eight and I weigh one twenty five. Oh, 
you are dangerously close to me. You lose another pound, they're going to toss your ass right out of there. <laughs> are they trying to get you to eat? No, I'm not in a coven. Oh, you're not? No, I'm not. What? How do you get in a coven? You have to know people. No. Oh. Well, I've only been Wiccan for about a year. No. Oh, what do you do? I mean, um, don't you need a coven? No, you don't need it. How many in a coven, by the way? I think it's about three or more. All right. So two is just uh, two fat chicks. But, <laughs> but, but three is a coven. Yeah. Okay. So well, how did you get into Wicca? Well, I've always been interested in witchcraft, and <laughs> I just started reading up on it, and I thought it was a really good religion for me. Does it work? Yeah. Listen, you know, I kid Wicca a lot, but seriously, folks, they're into recycling, they're into the earth, they're into all this junk. It's nonsense, but it's it's good. I mean, you know, give me a religion where you're, you know, you know, you recycle and compost and stuff. I'm all right with that. What, have you put any spells on anybody? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, you have? Uh-huh. Like who? My dad. What'd you get him to do? I got him to be nice to me when he was being a jerk. Really? Yes. How'd that work? Well, I just did the spell for it, and the next day he was being really nice. And really? Days after that also. How do you now? What is that spell? Well, you pray to the goddess, and it wasn't like a whole ritual. It was just praying to the goddess and asking her, you know, for him to respect me and be nice to me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it worked. Yeah. All right. Do you dress weird? No. No. You wouldn't be able to tell you're Wicca. No, most people don't think so. No. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, other than that, who's your god? Is it a goddess? Well, um, saying the goddess is pretty much summing up all the goddesses. I see. But they're all chicks? Yeah. yeah. There are gods. Hey, what do you, uh, uh, can you do anything evil to somebody? You could, but I wouldn't. Oh, you could? Yeah, because it would come back to you three times harder. And I believe in karma. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Drew's karma got clipped on the way home the other night. I don't know if I told you that, Bruce, but still in the body shop. I... What what religion, uh, if any, did you grow up with? Well, my mom was Jewish, and she really forced oh. it on me, so I'm totally against oh. Jewish. <laughs> Listen, believe me, I know whatever it is you grew up with got forced on you, because this is what happened. And what about your dad? My dad, he isn't any religion. Oh. How pissed is your mom about this Wicca? Oh, she's pretty pissed, oh. but I don't talk to her. Believe me. Believe me, she's she's free. All right, listen, you'll have a Jewish wedding, though, believe me. Oh, trust believe me. Believe me, you'll get right over to this. See, listen, everybody, I was sitting here thinking what religion got rammed up her took us it too, too long and too early that made her snap and go, go the opposite, and this is what happens. You're half Jewish, uh, Bruce? Well... Yeah, uh, let's not ignore your past. You're half Jewish, right? Well... My mother's not my father is, so my good f Jewish friends tell me I'm not half your, Jewish. Your I'm mother's, not... your mother's ha Jewish? No, my father. Or your father is, right? Yeah. So you, can, yeah, because the Jew, the, uh, half the of Jews me doesn't go with exist. The mother's side. Half of me doesn't exist, according to my Jewish. Friends. All right, but you're, uh, you maybe you're one of those Jews for Jesus people. The point is, is a anyone who knows any Jewish mothers knows that the uh, daughter going Wicca is just. Oh. Uh, I mean, she she oh. probably had an aneurysm right there. Right. Well, I mean, at 16, that's a nice rebellion statement there. Oh, man. Oh, well, uh, she got back at her mother. Sh Shandi, yeah. did you have the bat mitzvah? No. Oh, you didn't? No, she's no. not that All right, heavy. all right. Well, then screw them. Listen, I'm thinking about having one of those at 34. Mm. and arrange one of those. Mm. Okay, we'll be back. I feel so liquidy. Really? Why? Yeah. Right. Hey, howdy. All righty. Hey, uh, Ann. You know that videotape I brought in? Take a look at that. Correct. On uh, Friday, and there's uh, that funny little uh, poll that uh, mentions the radio, and uh, I just thought you'd get a kick out of it. So I think you got to rewind it because uh, there's a boxing match on. Uh, I forget about the phone number. Yeah. Hey, you want to see that? Right? Oh, okay. Hey, here we go now. Back to the phones. Ian. Yeah, uh... You're 18. What's going on? Yeah, I, uh, sell nitrous at concerts for, like, money right now. 
and I have a tank, and uh, I huff a lot. Well, not right now. I've kind of gotten tired of it, but like I'm wondering what the long-term effects of huffing a lot of nitrous would be. It's kind of funny getting tired of uh, huffing nitrous because yeah. uh, you know, it, it you will put you to sleep. After a while. Hey, uh, how do you sell it at concerts? Uh, like in balloons. Uh huh. But yeah. don't you have to walk around with big balloons filled with it? Yeah. Well, uh, I have a big tank, like twenty-pound tank, and it makes like. A hundred balloons, and I sell them for like five dollars each. Yeah, but where do you where, where do you, you sell them? Tank out of a car. You put the tank in your car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not like it's from, it's just a tank. I just keep it in the car to be safe because the security walks around. Uh huh. And and you just sort of park it out in the parking lot, and people yeah. know where to find you. Yeah, you've never seen nitrous before. It's like at every concert, like usually like hippie concerts. I got to tell you, I'm uh, you know I'm part of the uh, the cultural elite who gets to go in through the back, and uh, you know I just sit in the boss tones train. Eat the law if uh, you had the tank in your car, yeah. as long as you had a long enough uh, hose. Law if uh, you had the tank in your car, yeah. as long as you had a long enough uh, hose. With your theory, but I've never, I've known a lot of guys who tried nitrous a, a few times, but I never knew anyone who really, uh, really took off with it. Well, I don't it's know if it's... Hippie crack. When the people are doing it at the time, they're addicted. That's why he makes so much money off it. Cause yeah, they're into it when they're into it, but yeah. I don't know if they need to go huff again uh, the next night. They usually just have a headache. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it kills your brain cells, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, well, stop doing that, then. I, I want to know, like, with the, like, if there's any, like, serious long-term effects besides just killing brain cells. Yeah, Bruce, what do you know? Uh, nitrous oxide in people that use it on a regular basis uh, does have some pathology in the, or effect on the nervous system. Yeah, no kidding. And, I was at the dentist. Yeah, that. and again, the problem with nitrous oxide, when you're inhaling it at the dentist's office or somewhere, there's a high percentage of oxygen mixed in with it, and some... Uh, the deaths, and there have been many deaths in people that use uh, I'm trying to, rock med with Haight Ashbury Free Clinic, and they really, yeah. What year was this? Oh, I was well, ninety three, ninety four. I I'm guess not, you would have to have some physicians at a at a dead concert because you got you know fifteen thousand people all all high, right? Right. Well, these guys are experts, and the dead wanted them there at any concert they did because they understood hallucinogen. Right. Uh, toxicity when people would have bad trips. So did you or, get to see the concert and stuff? Yeah, it was great. I wasn't I wasn't I'm not, I wasn't a member of Rock Med. They just let me sort of hang out with them. Let me tell you was, something about Bruce. He's cool. As a matter of fact, what's the guy's name from No Doubt? Tom. Tom, the lead guitar player from No Doubt, is still playing one of Bruce's guitars. No, he's not. I swear to God. Oh, that triangle one? Yeah. The one that the guy from uh, Triumph threw out and he took out of his garbage can <laughs> in 1987. That guitar, it, let's say, Bruce collects guitars. And when we had uh, No Doubt in here, you know, the one where I uh, uh, made all those racial slurs and everything and uh, got them all pissed off? You pissed everybody off. Oh, I life. didn't do that. The point is, is when No Doubt was in here like two and a half years ago, Bruce was uh, in here. Bruce got to talking to Tom, and I swear to God, uh, any other time I've seen them, he's been playing your guitar. Huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. That's right. It's very cool. Oh, wait a minute. Would you pick another call? Oh, oh, oh. Start doing your Were job. Are we done with that guy? Yes, I'm done with him. Well, he's an addict. I mean, okay, no, he's smoking pot on a daily basis, and this is... Okay. Good. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm just... Listen, I'm going to take whoever's been on hold the longest, so put your put your marks a lot down. Oh, boy. Michaelia? Oh, she, she fell asleep. Yeah. She did. Maybe she's huffing nitrous. No. Falls asleep during sex. Has done it four times. Her past. Her boyfriend is annoyed. Maybe, he, maybe he's on top of her right now. Oh, come on. This is the average level line listener at about 10 to 12. Yeah, I'm going on one of my rants against the government, and uh, they're like, okay, I'm going to call tonight. All right. Uh, I okay. don't wake her. I, I'm yeah. telling you, Sherry could wake the dead. She really could. She wakes up all our callers. Wait a minute. Sherry starts screaming, Abe Lincoln gets up, huh? Okay. I'm just moving to whoever's uh, been on hold the longest, okay. you understand? All right. Ashley. Um, hi. Ashley, your 14, 21-year-old boyfriend did things with her, then blew her off for another. 
Yeah, it's basically it. We weren't right. really going out. Good. Ashley, I have uh, only a couple minutes, so I'm just going to, not going to sugarcoat anything. Anybody who's 21 and goes out with a 14 year old is flawed. Emotionally okay. flawed. All right. This guy was an a hole from the word go because no decent man who was uh, 21 would go out with a 14 year old. Okay? Now, it may be seven years difference, and uh, there's a big difference between 27 and 34, but that's seven, uh, that, that isn't as big in that situation, but it is at 14 and, and 21. You understand? Yes. All right. I don't know what your dad did to you, but stop it. Okay. <laughs> stop, stop living it. You understand? I know your dad's not around, or I know he did you wrong, or I know somebody did, some male did you wrong, right? No. Where's your dad? Oh, he's in San Jose right now. Okay, why? Me and my dad have a because my mom and dad are divorced. Yeah. But we have a great relationship. You do. How often do you see him? Um, I go up there for the summers and on Christmas. Yeah. I talk to him on the phone all the time. Any any male ever do anything weird to you? No. Huh? Uh uh No. You're lucky. I don't have time to get to the bottom of this. Anyway, don't go out with any more 21 year olds. All right. They're all idiots. Okay. Okay. Yeah, That's good enough. I just want to talk to uh, Michaela. Michaela. Hi. Yeah, 23. Yeah. How'd Sherry get you up? <laughs> um, my boyfriend's really mad and upset at me because he mm. says every now and then, in the middle of sex, I fall asleep. And I don't remember that ever happening, and I wonder if maybe something's wrong with me. Mm, no. I, maybe, uh, uh, do you have narcolepsy? Not that I'm aware of. All right. You ever fall asleep doing anything else? driving sometimes. All right. Maybe you have an nice. ambivalence about sex with your boyfriend. No. You have ambivalent feelings no, about your boyfriend, she, should fall, I say. she falls asleep driving. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Tell her. <laughs> I don't She's think just... it has to do with my boyfriend. All right, but where do you... Hey, seriously, do you ever fall asleep driving? Yeah. Well, everyone falls asleep driving. So no, they don't. i never done that. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> Last thing I want to see is Michaela coming across on my, my side of the highway. She's uh, sawing logs on, in, the, in the driver's seat, and she's coming right at me. All right, listen. Uh, give your boyfriend uh, more oral sex, all right? <laughs> and if you fall asleep during that, you got a real problem in the relationship. This is Love Line. Love Line will be right back. It's Love Line. 106.7. Miss K Rock. Hey, hey, it's Love Line. All right, Bruce, wonderful job tonight. Thank you. Total pro. I, You're not getting paid for this, are you? No. Oh, thank God. That'd be a I have to talk to my agent. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to say something about the 20-year-old 20, 20 guys and 14-year-old girls. It's abuse. Oh, yeah. And it's, I run into it in the practice all the time. Where it's, you're banging 14 year olds? Oh, no. Oh, that no. was really, no. really. Bad. I know, because you're like 38, so you'd be banging like uh, 19 year olds or something. Oh, no. No, this, okay. it's, it's a real common form of abuse. It absolutely is. And listen, no, nobody, no team could convince me that a guy was 21, 22 going out with a 14 year old was, uh, did not have a flaw, a tragic character flaw. All right. We're out of time. I want to thank Engineer Brett for doing a great job tonight. Until next time, this is Sam Crowley for Dr. Bruce. Say mahalo. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed herein are not necessarily those of the staff or management or producers or directors or the advertising or anyone. But they might be Bob's. I'm Bob, and they're mine. The producer of Love Line is Ann Wilkins. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment. Grr, arg. We now return you to your highly tested, regularly scheduled programming. Bye. 106.7 K-Rock.